Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here to tell you that I have decided to do uh, Strat 365 because my baseball fix, you know, I'm still waiting for pitchers and catchers to report. I'm still waiting for Strat opening day. I'm still waiting for, um, you know, my Strat stuff to arrive. So I'm going to fill the void with... Uh, my Strat 365 season. One of my buddies actually joined the league with me, Tom Bunch, who is a commissioner of one of the Stratomatic leagues that I'm in. And that's a good lead in because Strat 365 is basically like a uh, Strat play by email league that you would be in, a league where you send your commissioner your parameters or your uh, or your actual CM, you make the CM and send it to them. It's a lot like that. It has a lot of the same, um, a lot of the same parameters that you can set for your team. And we're going to take a look at my team. It's as you can see, it's the Maryland Crabbers. I, I've named it. It's a 12-team league from the 80s. This is a back to the 80s league. So uh, th it's going to be. A, it's obviously going to be 80s players. And it's kind of cool because it's not a specific season for the 80s. So what they do is, and I will show you this in a minute, but what they do is you will see five possible season cards for each player from the 80s. Um, and you don't know which card the game is going to use. Whatever card they choose, they use all season long. But you don't know what it is until after the World Series winner is revealed, or after the, you know, the World Series is over. Then you then and only then does every player find out what card was used for each player on their team. So uh, with that, let's take a look at my team. Let's take a look at the roster. First, you got the pitchers. We have twenty five. I have twenty five guys and. It's an $80 million salary cap league, and I only have $350,000 available, and there is no player that you can sign for $350,000, so I'm pretty much at my limit, unless I cut two guys and sign one in, in, in their place. <coughs> uh, or maybe one player if he makes enough money. But we've got Roger Clemens, Burt Blylevin, Bob Welch, Matt Young, Mike Moore, Ricky Horton, Dan the Quiz Quisenberry, uh, Paul Ossenmacher, Craig Lefferts, Lee Guterman, and Doug Bear. So my rotation is going to be Clemens, Blylevin, Welch, uh, Young, and Moore. Young and Moore are terrible, but it's an $80 million salary cap league. You can't have all Roger Clemenses. And as you can see, Roger Clemens is $9.6 million. Blylevin eats up $7.62 million. And Welch eats up $6.66 .6 million. So, um, and I, you know, you look down here in the hitters, I don't have a hitter that even makes, is, that's uh, valued um, monetarily as high as any of my three top starting pitchers. Um and so that's, um, that's, you know, something I have to contend with because my offense is not going to be that great. So we have Jody Davis as a catcher. Barry, Damon Barry Hill is a catcher. Dan Dreesen is a first baseman. Tommy Herr at second base. Uh, uh, Buddy Bell at third base. Wayne Gross um, at third. Tim Hewlett is a possible infielder, backup infielder. Uh, Dick Schofield, my shortstop. Craig Reynolds is a shortstop on the team. Vince Coleman is an outfielder. Um, Dave Collins is an outfielder. Dave Henderson is an outfielder. Ken Landro and Ellis Valentine. And you can see Ellis Valentine, negative five arm. Boom! You're not running on Ellis Valentine. So um, let's, from here, we can go to my team and let's look at the lineups that I made. My lineup versus left-handed starting pitchers will be Tom Hur at second, Dreesen at first, Henderson in center field, Buddy Bell at third, Jody Davis at catcher, Ellis Valentine in right, Dave Collins the left fielder, 
Schofield at short and Vince Coleman, the DH. Vince Coleman batting last, even though he's a triple-A base stealer because it's going to set up a, like a, you know, um, uh, a leadoff man before the leadoff man, like a second leadoff man. Uh, the right-handed uh, starting pitcher lineup is going to be Tom Herr at second, Dan Dreesen at first, Buddy Bell at third, Wayne Gross at DH, Damon Berryhill at catcher, Craig Reynolds at short, uh, Dave Collins in left, Valentine in right, and Len Landro in center field. And uh, we will look at my rotation. Let's see here. Starting, yeah, your default rotation. And so my ro my rotation, as you can see, it's Clemens, Blylevin, Welch, Moore, Young. And... Um, Let's go back to the team roster, and I'll show you what I was talking about with the uh, with the seasons. Roger Clemens. Now, Roger Clemens is a great ex is a great example of why it doesn't. It, in some cases, it won't matter. Here are the five seasons from which the game will choose a Roger Clemens uh, season, and I won't know which one they choose, but they're all good. So. I mean, you can see his worst season is 89. And even in 89, he had a 313 earned run average and a 122 whip. But, um, you know, you've got a 248 um, ERA and 097 whip up there. If, you, if they choose that one, I'm in the catbird seat. They've got uh, a 118 whip and a 297 ERA. In 88, he had a 293 earned run average and a 106 uh, whip. And in 1990, he had a 193 ERA and a 108 WHIP. And then when you when you um, go to a certain uh, league or a certain season, it'll show you the card right down here. So here you can see this is his worst card right here: the 313 earned run average and the 122 WHIP. And even that card is not bad. Um, so, you know, but there will be guys that, um, like Tim Hewlett is like almost the opposite. Tim Hewlett has, um, really one good year right here. He had 17 home runs. He only hit 231, but he had 17 homers. Um, but. Uh, and then for batting average, his best year was uh, was 268 with a 320 on base percentage, but only five home runs that year. So you know, I mean, I don't know that it really matters. And besides, Hewlett is really a he's a, like a backup infielder. He'll only play for me when someone gets injured. But you can see uh, how it is. Now there are little clues that you could pick up on possibly during the season to figure out which card they're using. Like, um, if somebody gets uh, injured um, and you know where the injury, what the role was or something with the injury, something along those lines. Um, or it's a high injury or they get injured a lot and there's only one card where the injury is in a prominent place, then you know maybe that's the card that they're using. Uh, if, a, if a batter hits a triple and he only has one card where he has a chance to get a triple... But really, for all intents and purposes, it's going to be almost impossible to tell what card they're using. Um, because even if Clemens shuts people down, like just completely shuts them down, that doesn't mean I got the 097 whip year, you know. So I, I, I wouldn't necessarily know. I mean, I might know that they don't, that they're not using the 122 whip year, but... I wouldn't necessarily know outside of that what card they're using. So, um, and then we have, uh, let's see, you know, here's the standings. We haven't played a game yet. What they do is they play three games a night. There's like a three, you have three game series every day, and they play one of those series every day at 10 o'clock p.m. Um, so, if you're up at 10 o'clock, you can see what the results are, <coughs> or you check the next morning and see. But anyway, um, so a season is played in 
like basically less than two months, which is really good because this season will end at the end of, uh, on that schedule, this season will end at the end, near the end of March. And that's right about the time that uh, Major League Baseball's real season will be starting. So you can see I'm in the Central Division with the uh, Morgan Mill Rangers, the Delaware Destroyers, and the uh, Anab Anabolic uh, Stirrups 16. And my buddy is Tom Bunch, and he is in the East, and he's the uh, Henrietta Hobgoblin. So, uh, and then, uh, yeah, let's look at um, my team and then my, uh, your, like, let's look at hitter preferences. So you've got this hitter preference page, avoid lefty righty, sack bunt, hit and run, steal, don't pinch hit for, avoid pinch hitting for, um, uh, remove for a defensive sub. It's got a lot of the same things that the game has. And so it'll follow those same parameters. It's just like sending in a, uh, a CM to your, um, you know, to your, uh, commissioner of your league. Um, and you got free agents. Here's a list of free agents. Here are the hitters. You can break it down by position. If you want catchers, first base, all hitters, all starting pitchers. We can sign a starting pitcher anytime, but there are penalties for um, on the salary that you let go. It's like a 5, 10, 15. Up until a certain point, you sacrifice 5% of their salary if you cut them. So like if they made a million dollars, you don't get the whole million, and you cut the guy, you don't get the whole million back. You you get like whatever it would be, 950000 or whatever it comes. I'm terrible at math, so I don't know. But whatever it comes out, 5% comes out to, that's all you would get back. And then after a certain point, it becomes 10% that you sacrifice if you cut someone, and then 15%. Um, I guess partially because there's really a lot of quality guys that are still left. I mean, you know. You look in the starting pitchers, Jimmy Key is still out there. Langston is out there. Bob Ojeda is out there. Rick Sutcliffe, Atley Hamaker, Dave Dravecki. A lot of quality guys. Jack Morris. Jack Morris isn't on a team. So there's still a lot of quality guys, but these, you know, these guys make a lot of money. And so, you know, I would have to, like, if I cut Mike Moore to sign one of these guys, I'd still have to cut probably somebody else um, out of the bullpen or, uh, you know, one of my good hitters. So, you know, I'm, I'm thinking with two bad starting pitchers, I can probably get by most teams, probably have to have at least two bad starting pitchers. Um, and in some cases, three. I've got three good ones. And only two bad ones. So I think I struck an, a, a good enough balance. I'm going to have great pitching. If the great pitching really comes through for me, like in Quisenberry in the bullpen, Lefferts in the bullpen, and uh, defense up the middle, I'm good too. I have, you know, Tommy Hurz a second base too. Uh, Dick Schofield's a shortstop too. Dave Henderson's a center field too. So if that comes through... Um, and I play, you pick a park to play in too. And um, I'm in, let's see here. I don't know if it'll tell me here, but I'm in Comiskey Park. And Comiskey Park was only like a one to two for home runs, which is good because I don't have home run hitters. So whenever home run hitting teams come to visit me, they're going to face good pitching, good defense up the middle, and a park that doesn't allow a lot of ballpark homers. So that's where we are. Um, maybe I'll give an update later on um, about how we're doing in this league. Oh, and then, by the way, I want to say that... Um, let's go look at the standings again. If you click on my name, you can see that uh, I have done this, but I've done this before in the past. This will be my sixth season. I've done it five other times. And I'm, uh, I have a 382 and 428 record for a 472 win percentage. Pretty much like the rest of my Stratomatic life. 
Um, so we'll see what happens. That comes out to like a 73 win season, something like that. Maybe 74, somewhere in that area. So that's the average that I've been running, like a 74 win season. Here you can see I was almost 500. Almost. You know, that guy, the fisherman with the hook, you almost got it. But uh, not quite that year. But, uh, you know, so maybe I can be over 500 with this team. What do you guys think I'm going to do? But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, and we'll see how I do, and uh, maybe I'll do an update on it later on. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.